Let's look at uh, a second example called uh, read to yourself. Spin on dopant for silicon wafer. This is for either so silicon solar cells or for semiconductor processing for um, chips, for computer chips. Okay, so mathematically it's kind of the diffusion in a so-called semi-infinite. Infinite, but semi. We're going to talk about why semi with a fixed amount of total dopant. So, quite often the example would be driving the acceptor of boron or donor of phosphorus B or P into silicon. You spin on using a spin coater, put the material onto the silicon wafer surface, and then raise the temperature to 800-1000 degrees C, and then the phosphorus or boron will not sit still at the surface. They are going to diffuse into your silicon, initially high purity silicon. So this is our initial high purity silicon, really, really, really pure. The impurity concentration is less than a billion. It's really, really pure. And then you put a so-called uh, dopant, dopant glass quite often, spin on coating, spin coating onto it, dry it, remove the solvent, and then you have essentially a glass that contains high concentration of either boron or phosphorus. And you raise up the temperature, that boron or phosphorus will not sit still, they're going to diffuse into the silicon. That's how people form so-called uh, PN junction. Okay, for semiconductor, silicon-based semiconductor. Very, very important. And then to mathematically describe this process, again, assumptions. D, constant, okay, for simplicity. And quite often, because the concentration we're dealing with is still low for silicon, so it's correct. Second one, we assume it's kind of, we said it's silicon wafer, but for diffusion purpose, we kind of, assume it's relatively thick compared with the diffusion, which means I'm doing diffusion on which side? Left side, which means on the right side, the other side, there's no impact within the time scale that I'm considering. Let's don't go to infinity, but let's say you do the process for half an hour, one hour. Whatever happens to the left doesn't really impact anything on the right okay so that's our simplification of assumptions and of course we are fixed second law is this one because we can write this form because we have assumed the d the diffusion equivalent to be constant and uh, analytically and analytically to solve this what you learned in differential equation would be we have to use something called the uh, boundary conditions and initial conditions the initial condition, as you can see, we write it down here, would be C equals infinity when time is zero, which means at the before the diffusion happened, I put this spin on dopant here. That's kind of from concentration point of view, it's infinite. It's really, really, really high. At the x equals zero, at the left surface. Make sense? And then initial condition, Going into the silicon, T is zero, let's say it's high purity silicon, which means the initial concentration is zero throughout. That's so-called initial conditions. What about boundary condition? Boundary condition we said at the far end, the other end, nothing really happened. Make sense? What essentially it says would be X goes to positive infinity, the local concentration stays at uh, zero, okay, mathematically. And then we don't, of course, we don't go into the detail. To solve it, you have learned it before. This is the solution. We just give it directly here. C, the concentration would be a function of both location and time, and it's given in this format. N let's say is the initial total amount of dopant you put on the surface. That's what we call spin on dopant. You put a finite amount onto the surface. Make sense? That's the N. And the square root of pi dt, d is diffusion coefficient, t is time, and then 
times a exponential term of x squared over 4 dt minus 1. Okay. Let's stare at this for a moment. If we have C versus X concentration profile, initially, as you can imagine, initially the concentration should go very, very high, right? Then as long as T is not zero, because mathematically when when t is zero become problematic in this function. But as long as t is not zero, a finite time, this term would go to a high number, right? The longer the t, the this term become smaller. Make sense? Okay. And then as long as t is finite at x equals zero, what is this term? As long as t is not zero, when x is zero means well at the surface, right? When x is 0, this exponential term is 1, right? And then it depends on time, which means at the surface over time, the concentration is going to decrease over time. Make sense? At the very top surface, the concentration decreases with time as long as I'm not dealing with 0 time. Make sense? And then for a fixed T. Let's look at at a, any given time t, which means at a given time t, the pre-exponential term is fixed. Within here, for a fixed t, when x goes to infinity, what happens to this whole exponential term? Goes to zero, right? It's kind of like a start from here. It goes when x goes to infinity, it goes to zero. So that's kind of something like this. Of course, not a precise drawing at t1. And then as time goes longer, at t2, as long at, uh, at t2, when x equals 0, this whole thing, exponential term, is still 1. t goes longer, which means it's going to, at here, it's going to decrease, right? And of course, where does that uh, decrease the uh, stuff go? towards right so naturally it becomes something like this okay and uh, we have the mathematical description at finite t2 x goes to zero uh, sorry x goes to infinity goes to zero and of course it goes further become like this the concentration distribution become lower lower extended further deeper and deeper into the material make sense and of course the T1 is shorter than T2, shorter than T3. Okay? So let's pause here for a second.